Alrighty, hello everyone. Uh, so my name is Stefan. I'm a uh, media producer, and if you're watching this, you can see there's a couple of people on Facebook on UXL. Uh, if you're watching this right now, we're doing a multi-stream. This is going to be a test for uh, UXL's networks to see if we can bring the FCMG producers log uh, to you guys, which is a uh, a little chat where we sit down and we kind of um, we talk about media production, we talk about gear. And we ask questions to each other. Um, I might ask questions for you. How's it going? Hey, bro. I'm um, getting some comments already. I'm going to pop open the Instagram chat as well. Here we go. There we go. Hello, everyone. Welcome if you're uh, catching this on Instagram. And uh, we're also on YouTube, Facebook. We're also talking on Twitch at the same time. Uh, there's a couple people already filtering in. Um, so yeah, we're going to be talking about media today. Uh, how's it going? Everyone on Instagram. We got a lot of people already popping in on the chats. Uh, this is the FCMG producers log. I am a uh, streamer. I kind of talk about media and question and answer questions about, uh, gear, uh, photo video stuff, all kinds of stuff like that. Hello everyone. There's tons of waves going on. Um, this is a great community. Um, so yeah. UXL and I kind of teamed up on this thing and we're doing a little test stream right now to see if it works out, see if we can answer some questions, get some conversations started. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, just uh, chat about media in general. We're going to be doing some how to's. We're going to be doing some um, different types of um, uh, like, uh, let's let's see. Oh, here, I'm looking at my list. Sorry, I'm getting tons of comments. This is, uh, this is my first time getting like this kind of influx and it's great. Uh, it's lovely seeing everyone here. Um, but yeah, we teamed up, UXL and I, we're going to be doing some lesson content. We're going to be doing some how to's and some gear talks. So we're going to compare different pieces of gear and we'll uh, discuss with you your experiences and your, um, you know, your thoughts on these pieces of gear as well. Uh, it's supposed to be an open forum for everyone. So we're happy to hear your questions. And as we move on through this, uh, we'll have some segments for answering questions and whatnot. And we also have our friend Ashley over here. Um, uh, she's going to be helping us out with uh, with moderating. Uh, we got our friends over at UXL too. They're helping us out, and uh, yeah, we'll um, we'll hear your questions. I just wanted to uh, read a little statement. So because UXL and I have teamed up, uh, this video is sponsored by UXL Career and Learning Network. Are you interested in learning a new skill? Uh, UXL is a leader in providing online training. They host courses from top rated instructors across the globe find courses on just about any subject and join a community of over half a million passionate learners. Visit UXL and register today. So yeah, the, uh, the first thing that I kind of wanted to talk about today was the importance of live streaming and how you can use it to, um, to connect with your audiences. Uh, Ashley's in the chat monitoring right there. Feel free to type in your questions. We're going to get some, uh, some stuff going right away. Uh, I've already got actually a question in the chat right now. Uh, what's a simplistic setup to get an external HDMI device, PS4 switch into a PC for streaming when you only have a one monitor setup? Well, there's some really good options out there. Uh, like for instance, I'm currently using, this is more of like a broadcast device. So like if you're into um, live TV or, or anything like that, this is the ATEM Mini from Blackmagic Design. Uh, if we're talking in terms of like film equipment, this is relatively inexpensive. It's around $300 and you can plug in four cameras at one time. That's crazy though. So that's that's definitely outside of that. What I do suggest is this little thing back here. I might even be able to grab it from behind my camera really. No, I'll leave it. I'll show it to you uh, at some point. It's the Avermedia 2 Plus. Uh, it's a little device. It takes an HDMI in and also allows you to do an HDMI out. And then it goes into your computer via uh, USB 2, I think. Um, but either way, basically, it's powered by your computer, so it's it's really easy to power, and you can actually use it when it's not even connected to um, to a uh, like the internet to just record your media. So if you're ever playing a game over at a friend's house and you want to just capture the the media on an SD card or a micro SD card, uh, that's a great option. Uh, you know what? I am gonna grab it for you. This is a this is a perfect opportunity to show off some gear. All right, here we go. So, sorry about that. Um, so this is the Avermedia 2 Plus, this little guy right here. 
Uh, we'll get the camera focused on it for our viewers on Twitch and Facebook and all that. This is the Avermedia 2 Plus. This thing has uh, 4K capability, so you can put a 4K uh, signal into it and, and get your 4K signal out. It only streams 108060, but that's you know pretty good. It's got a downstream encoder directly in it, so that that makes a, a big difference. A lot of those um, uh, like um, encoders and whatnot, if you're outputting in 1080p60, you have to input in 1080p60. You can't do anything otherwise, and it's and it's going to mess up your stream otherwise. But um, for instance, like we we talked about the Black Magic design here, the ATEM Mini, that's relatively new, came out within the last couple of months. Um, the ATEM Mini is around 300 bucks, but it also has uh, multiple downstream encoders inside of it. So there's four inputs right there. You can put in four cameras, which is already like, okay, this thing is a little serious, um, but they're all HDMI inputs and you can put in like a 4K signal and output 1080p or 720 um, and, and you know still have that really nice 4K quality. So like, on Instagram, you guys are watching from my, my phone, which is a Note 10. We're finding a way to integrate the chats and all that stuff uh, into Restream, which is our, our streaming service, our multi-streaming service, actually. Um, but in uh, Twitch, Facebook, and YouTube, you're watching from a, uh, an A6400, which is a little uh, mirrorless camera connected directly into the ATEM Mini. So this camera has you know nice depth of field, and it looks all pretty and stuff like that. Sorry if I just punched the microphone. Um, so it's got really nice depth of field and all that, but, um, this, uh, it's, it's shooting in 4k. So it's a 4k signal going into the switcher that's being down sampled into 1080p. That's why it looks, you know, nice and crisp. And you see the little gleams in my eyes and all that stuff gives you some really, really nice quality. Um, the, um, the other aspect though, is like, you have to keep those cameras powered and there's, there's kind of difficulties there. So. Um, but it, it just means that you can input this signal that's really nice, high quality, and the A10 Mini will handle it. So while that might be a little bit of a you know an intense option for you, you could then you know game in 4K and play right through the A10 Mini. But uh, this little guy has the same options. You know the Aver Aver Media. Uh, it's a 4K pass through. Uh, you get portable uh recording to a micro sd card you can do that right here it's powered by micro usb so it doesn't even necessarily need to be plugged into your computer uh, it'll just uh just like plug it into a power bank and you can you can run that little thing um and it'll take any hdmi signal so you can record anything you know if you're wanting to record a, a tv screen or, or something like that it's a it's a great option How's it going, everyone on Instagram? We're getting a lot of waves in there. Um, we're chatting about media production gear today, uh, photo, video techniques, all that stuff. Um, Ashley just uh, just put the product details in the chat. You can check that out for that Avermedia little 2 plus 4K pass through box. It's great. Works great for gaming, works great for media, all that stuff. Howdy there, God, God, God Bay Stan. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're seeing some good chats pop up and it's uh it's nice to, nice to see everyone visiting us today so um what we're doing today if uh if you're just popping in is an ama work stream where you can ask me anything or feel free to ask the chat anything about uh photo video media production um <laughs> uh you ask that question and i'll you know i'll answer your question as best as i can i'll talk about my experiences but you're also encouraged to uh you know communicate with each other in the chats talk about some different uh, media experiences that you've had and you know where you're from and all that stuff. Um, I've got some points on the list that I wanted to talk about. The first one was the importance of live streaming, especially right now when a lot of us are stuck at home, we're all kind of cloistered in our, in our little production zone so we can get editing done, which is great. Um, you know, if, if we have a job that we can work on a computer. Um, but for a lot of us, that means that we can't produce the same way that we could before. We have a lot of techno technology, a lot of nice cameras, you know, all, all this stuff, but it, it makes it difficult to produce. So live streaming has been um, uh, a good way for, for us to connect with uh, all, all kinds of people. I just saw that, that chat pop in up there. I'm gonna answer that question in a second. So live streaming is a, is a great way to connect with a ton of people. Uh, not only does it notify everyone in your, who's following your page or following your group or, or whatever, but 
it gives people a uh hey nate williams like the stream appreciate it uh, it gives people a way to interact with you directly um you know like right there nate just uh he he liked the stream and so that gave us a little notification and and a, and a sound popped up um you on instagram you didn't quite see that yet that's over on uh twitch.tv forward slash uh fcmg underscore stay if i can you know say my link there right um there you can see the whole live stream setup that we have we're going to try and get it ported through instagram soon but instagram is a is a whole nother story um <laughs> get it story <laughs> um all right so yeah talking to your your fan bases your customers everything like that through live streams can be huge uh can be a great way to connect with people on a person to person basis. And it can also be a good way to show off your skills like like this, um, like the Twitch and Facebook and YouTube community is seeing um, is, uh, you know, it's a, it's a good example of like, okay, this guy's a nice camera. He's got a good audio system. He can do these things. So it's a good way to show off yourself uh, just personally as a, as a producer. Um, it's also a great way to connect with interesting communities that use the same kind of technology that you have that have different experiences with it. So I've been learning all kinds of things with this. Like for instance, um, there's these, uh, these Anso dummy battery things. These are fantastic if you're trying to power a mirrorless camera for a long, long time. Um, a lot of these mirrorless cameras have issues where they, they start to overheat or things like that. Matt Griller, appreciate it. Um, where they, they start to overheat. So these, these dummy batteries, uh, Robinson, good morning. Um, <laughs> These dummy batteries can help prevent your camera from overheating. You can plug in giant batteries to them and all this stuff. And they're relatively inexpensive. You know, they're 25 to $40. You can find ones for 60 bucks that have all kinds of USB ports and stuff. Uh, but there's all kinds of gear out there that can uh, turn your equipment into something different. Um, like I never thought that I'd be able to use an A6400 as a webcam and, you know, shoot in F1.8. Like it's, it's really nice being able to use a nice shallow uh depth of field and, and whatnot on your streams um but uh yeah it's it's also uh, a great advertisement tool it's a great way to connect and it's a great way to do this stuff from home so if you haven't tried it definitely check it out there's a big boom in the industry right now and a lot of people are doing this kind of thing so it's a good time to just sort of try it out and if it doesn't you know it doesn't stick with you it doesn't stick if it's not something that you really like doing it's not something you like doing but it's a great way to share your expertise share your experience and uh, you know, share your your outlook with the rest of uh, your community. All right, we're gonna answer Owen's question really quick right here. Um, if I run a game device through an external capture card, will software like OBS have a preview of the device? I only have one monitor with a single HDMI port, so I couldn't have the HDMI out of the card and also my PC visible together. Hmm. Okay, so I I think I understand what you mean there. Um, there is a preview within OBS. Like right now I'm streaming through a program called Streamlabs OBS, which connects with a service that lets you put on all kinds of overlays. That's why you're seeing this stuff down here and little notifications down, down there and, and whatnot. Um, Instagram, again, if you, if you check Twitch, that's, uh, that's where we are. FCMG underscore stay. And you'll see that interface that we're talking about. Um, Streamlabs and OBS are very, very similar. Streamlabs literally uses OBS, which is open source software, to create their platform for you to stream. So uh, we're really just using a modified version of OBS, uh, but it, it gives you a preview. It does have a bit of a delay. So when you're looking at that preview, don't think that, you know, oh, I just said this and it's, it's coming out delayed on the other end. There is an option to record. So do a little test recording, check it out and um, see if it's going to um, you know, give you a delay or, or whatnot there. And then you can, if you are getting delays on like your audio, you can go in by device and actually set your, uh, your, oh, what is that called? Latency. That's what it is. Um, yeah. So just set that up and, and test it out a couple times. Like I have, I have a folder on my computer with probably a hundred random little videos, uh, that do that. Wirecast is very similar also. Interesting. Okay. I've never actually used Wirecast. I've been hearing about Wirecast and um, streaming directly out of Restream, which is another service I wanted to talk about in a second. Um, but I, I've never actually tried that out. I've used OBS a couple times before and I've used um, uh, Streamlabs OBS, obviously. Those are both desktop apps. 
Um, there's also other platforms that you can use to stream. So like I'm streaming to Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram currently. Um, hello to everyone on Instagram and hello to everyone on Facebook, YouTube, and, and Twitch. Um, so I'm streaming to that platform right now, but uh, there's other platforms like Mixer. There's all kinds of things. And like when you start using a program like Streamlabs, where they have uh, you know buttons for when you go to connect your, your streaming output, uh, it'll say connect these accounts. And I had no idea there were that many streaming services. Uh, it's incredible, uh, really. So there's there's great ways to uh, connect with your audience through through these live streaming services. Let's uh, let's see what Mac Riller's comment was here. Um, Wirecast very similar. Um, I work in live streaming and latency is a huge thing. Learning to set delay is a must. Absolutely, yeah. In um, in television broadcast, uh, uh, a lot of you who who work in television and broadcast media, you you know that there's a mandatory live stream delay. So when you're streaming live to television, there is a, a broadcast delay. But um, when you're working in these programs as well, like I have a set delay with mine, so that if my stream goes down for any reason, like if I lose connection, whatever, I have I think it's ten seconds to get back on and all you'll see is a little a little skip. Justin Lingenfelter, appreciate the like. This is awesome. It's great having all these these friends pop in. Matt, I really appreciate your comments. You're uh you're definitely a resource in the industry. Um Matt and I have worked together on a couple of things with uh mostly concerning Sideshow. Um like I was shooting a documentary for uh about Sideshow and we're still working on this this project and uh he was there helping out in the background. He was he was he just happened to be there. But he was uh, he was offering a hand, and it was it was really really cool. Um, we got to work for for like six hours together, and then uh, they had to they had to head out. But it was really cool. We we're we we're filming a um, a sideshow and stunt um, instructional course for Harley Newman, which is a a really interesting person. I'm sure we'll have him on the show at some point um, after the you know the quarantine and all that. We hope to have some guests on here, but otherwise. This show, the uh, producer's log, is going to be every Monday around noon. Uh, today we were a little bit late getting started, but hey, we've got you know 15 different <laughs> different places that we're streaming to, and tons of people that we're chatting with. Um, it's really really cool to see everyone in the chats here and and get everything you know set up and working. Uh, thank you again to UXL for helping sponsor this podcast and and this live stream and and get this information out. You know, I'm I'm happy to chat with anyone about media stuff all the time. Um, but we actually do have a plan coming up, which is interesting. Uh, I'm going to be releasing episodes with UXL's help uh, about how to be a photographer, how to be a videographer, how to be a freelancer, how to be a, um, uh, what, was, what was the next one? Media producer, and then I think um, how to be an artist. So like how to do that thing for yourself after. And it's, it's going to be a building um, series that we're going to start off with... Um, Hello there on, on Instagram. I'm seeing a bunch of hellos. Just wanted to say, you know, say that. But we're going to be doing this series together where we talk about the bare bones basics, you know, starting with your, your cell phone, um, you know, finding like a cell phone that you can use that's inexpensive to take photos, to take videos, how to edit them, how to, um, you know, put, it them together, put them together and all that stuff. And then we're going to work our way up to bigger cameras. Like we're going to talk about mirrorless cameras and, you know, equipment like this, like putting a cage on your camera, um, why and how they, you know, how they help out and all that stuff. <clears throat> and then we'll also get all the way up to broadcast stuff. So we'll be talking about, you know, bigger cameras like cinema cameras and camcorders and whatnot and how you can use those and uh, improve your setups and whatnot. Um, oh, we got more, uh, more comments from Matt coming in here. Uh, I'm going to take a sip of water, read this in a second so everyone on Instagram can see. can hear. Ashley just corrected me. You're not going to be able to see the words that are coming out of my mouth. Anyway. All right. Um, so Mac Riller types, we use a 30 second delay for our classes. So our clients do not see lapses in feed. We found 30 seconds gives us time to reconnect and reroute and not provide any stream breakage. We take a break hourly. So if we need to catch up on the delay by running a duplicate stream and matching title cards, during the next break. That's, that's really interesting. Okay. So basically you're setting a longer delay on your live broadcast, which you can do in, you know, Streamlabs. you can do it in OBS. 
Uh, and then you can use those to stream to Instagram. So you can set up these delays as well on social media accounts. Um, setting up a delay like that means that if your, uh, if your connection drops out, times out, anything like that, then you still have um, time to reconnect and people won't actually see the break they'll just see like it'll come up to a point and then it'll it'll switch over to your your new stream that you're you've started you know picking up again um otherwise if you're if you're set if your delay is like mine where i think i only have like a 10 second one set up right now um it it doesn't give you a whole lot of time but i'm sitting with here with an ethernet connection i'm connected to a wall so typically my interruptions are you know split second so if you're on a uh, streaming device, like a mobile device or a cell phone, you might want that delay to be a little bit longer. So people might not be able to interact with you in real time, but they will have a, you know, a consistent stream coming to them. Um, my stream is a little bit like we have the delay set to only 10 seconds because I want to be able to answer your questions and talk to you and be able to interact. Um, Instagram, if I'm not mistaken, is much shorter than that. It's just like a second or two. It might even just be like three seconds. Um, but it's, you know, it's really interesting to get into these different platforms, try out different, uh, ways of live streaming and, and, and getting this content out there and seeing how things work for you. Um, yeah. Thank you, Matt Griller for the comments. I appreciate that. You're, uh, you're definitely a, a good person to hear from. Um, all right. So the, uh, the series that we're going to be doing those, uh, you know, we're going to be working our way up from photography, videography, um, media production in general, like just being a, a kind of generalist or doing PA work on sets, like getting more into the industry. And then finally, we're, we're going to go to um, freelancing, which is, you know, doing this, this stuff for yourself, starting your own business or breaking out on your own things that you need to pay attention to starting with the basics and then working our way up to the more extreme versions where it's like, all right, you're going to set up a, you know, a four camera multi-stream. Like, how are you going to do it on a budget of only X amount of dollars? Um, but it's going to be fun. Uh, UXL is helping spread these, these episodes out and we're going to be doing them every week on Mondays. This is the producer's log live stream. And, uh, as always, you're welcome to ask us anything and bring up any questions about media production, photo, video, stuff like that. Um, we'll be making a series out of it, out of it. And hopefully it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, we got another question here. So let's, let's see. Whenever I, I, Hey, Ethan Goss Alexander liked the stream. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. Um, we got another question here from Owen. All right. Previous Twitch streams I've done had the video freezing every couple minutes with while audio is un uninterrupted. Okay. Other than that, the obvious answers of get better internet. Is there any advice on basic settings I might have missed configuring properly? Yeah, that does sound like a rendering issue. Um, you might either have your encoding settings set too high. So you're trying to push a high bit rate out. Um, like this, this, uh, the stream on Instagram or sorry, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch is all 6,000 megabits per second. So that's a, that's a pretty fast connection. Um, the one on Instagram is probably a little bit lower. So there's, there's some different things that are kind of happening there. Like if I were to shake the camera around, you might see some refresh issues or, or things like that. But, um, it could be also maybe you have um, your CPU forced as your rendering device. It's not actually rendering through your GPU. Um, you know, if, if your uh, output isn't coming from your graphics processor, then uh, it's not going to have as much power as, as it would normally. Um, I've run into these issues. Test some different settings. Check some, um, there's, I mean, here's an obvious answer, but there's YouTube videos on this stuff. Um, but look around and see what other people are saying. There's, there's a couple of different ways that um, those issues can crop up. I usually see lagged, dropped, or skipped frames. And those have um, different fixes every time. Like skipped frames means your camera is in like 1080, 60, and your stream is in 1080, 30. So you've got a whole lot more... Um, more frames coming in than you're putting out, which is makes it every now and then your, your camera, your computer goes eh, and just like skips a whole bunch of them to get rid of them because they don't need it. Um, meanwhile, lagged frames are going to be, uh, let's see, like freezing every, every couple minutes. I think that might be lagged frames. Um, drop frames are from connection issues typically or, uh, or whatnot, but 
um, lagged frames can be rendering issues where your, your computer just isn't, you know, processing quickly enough. So you can either change your settings within, um, within OBS. Uh, there are some ways to check between, um, like different types of encoding. Your computer might be faster with some of them. If you lower that bit rate, it might, uh, it might put it within the acceptable range. Matt Griller has a comment here. Also, if the stream has a two ways communication, it could be that your machine is trying to deal with incoming audio and video and to deal with the outgoing video. Um, yeah, yeah. So your, your in out um, routing there might, might give you an issue. Like I'm using a little breakout box here. I'm using one of those Scarlett, uh, Focusrite Scarlett 2i2, which is just a little uh, dual XLR in, and then you get two quarter inch outs in the back. Uh, those are going to studio monitors over here so you can I can hear myself and hear those notifications and all that um, but my computer is it's outputting to that box as well as outputting outputting digitally into OBS so it's doing a couple things at once and if I didn't have this you know monster machine that's back there it probably wouldn't be able to handle the kind of streaming that we're doing right now um, but you know as you can see it's it's working out pretty well it took a ton of testing to get it to the right spot. Um, but really like my best advice is to try and fine tune those encoding settings. Uh, as Mac Griller said right over, over here, uh, it sounds like a rendering issue. So it would be kind of, um, software related. Um, maybe upgrading your hardware could help, but that's expensive. So I, I don't, you know, recommend doing that as your first choice. Um, yeah, thanks Matt for the, uh, the, uh, response. Thank you Owen for the question. It's always great chatting it up with people. As always, you can feel free to ask questions on these things. Um, Instagram has been really hard to follow the chats. I'm getting wave, wave, waves, and uh, it's good to uh, it's good to see everyone. Um, but you're always welcome to ask questions too. Ashley is going to be helping out to um, to uh, uh, <laughs> to make sure that we get all our questions up here. Uh, Owen, okay, thanks so much. Your answers are thorough and helpful. Awesome. Hey, I appreciate it. That's uh, that's really nice of you to say. Lovely. All right. So, um, next thing I kind of wanted to talk about, I wanted to get some, uh, I actually wanted to ask you some questions. Uh, the only really question that I had was, um, we, we're all kind of, uh, professionals in, in different mediums. Um, I'm sure we have wide variety of careers among us, uh, among everyone who's watching. Um, but specifically speaking to like the, the media producers, people that do, graphics, web design, um, anything with cameras, anything with, with media in general. Um, I'm curious how your career has changed in the past couple of months. Um, I know for me, it's been a whole lot of work at home. Obviously I feel very fortunate that I can do work at home and I can do these live streams, um, and still connect with an audience and still, you know, do, do work for pay, which is, uh, it's, it's key in a, at a time like this, but, um, there's, there's ways that we can, I feel like we can all share with each other that, um, doing this sort of thing, uh, has changed our careers, but there's, there's some kind of cool things that we've learned from it. Like for instance, um, I had no idea that you can multi-stream to a whole bunch of platforms. I was kind of testing out with, with it before, but you know, finding ways to do an RTMP stream to, uh, Instagram, you know, or just any link, you could do it to your website. Um, is, is really interesting because all of a sudden you, you realize, okay, I could have like a TV show and the, the ideas start spinning off. So, um, for instance, I've been, um, I've been doing a lot more gaming streaming, uh, which I love playing video games. I'm kind of a sucker for them. Um, and I've been getting to test out a whole lot more video games because I've been sitting at home, but, uh, that's, you know, obviously not going to be my bread and butter. Um, instead what I've been doing is a whole lot of reviews on gears and equipment uh, gears and equipment, whole lot of reviews on gear and equipment on Amazon, on eBay, on any platform where I purchase equipment. Um, it can be a great method for you to go through to not only build rapport with the, the companies that you're buying equipment from and hopefully get better customer service and, and whatnot in the end. Uh, but you can also, uh, start getting offers for, Hey, we need someone to review this piece of camera equipment. Um, it's really been helping, you know, it's, it's, we have no reviews on it so far and we need someone to do a review for us to, to get the sales ball rolling. Um, they can sometimes send you a piece of equipment and, and offer to pay you back for that piece of equipment after you give a review. 
I've done that for a couple of places, but I, I have a strict policy of like, hey, listen, I'm either going to just send you comments and be like, listen, this thing's terrible, not to review, and I still expect to be paid, or I'm going to leave a good review if I believe in this product. Um, so there have been a bunch of things that I've been able to do reviews on, and the companies have been kind enough to send me a refund. Um, but, you know, definitely try that medium out yourself. Uh, that's that's my kind of bit of advice for for work at home stuff for, for everyone to do. Um, is this, uh, let's see, I'm going to pull up my chat box here. This is Ashley. I've been working from home every day and work has actually ramped up. I'm a web designer, so I had to make so many updates to clients' websites to communicate how they are handling COVID-19 and help them adjust their business to the digital space. Um, working remotely, I'm sure that that's a, um, you know, this is Ashley back over here uh, who's writing this comment, but it's um it's interesting to see how that happens. Like I, I kind of got the same sort of thing where I was, I was doing some editing work for clients and uh, because I have tons of free time and because they have tons of free time, the expectation was like, all right, well, you know, we're not really working in business hours. Bada Jones, I appreciate the like. That's very kind of you. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, if people kind of uh, lose track of the business hours aspect of, of life at that point. So it's, it's something where you have to kind of learn to, you know, work your time and, and get a whole influx of work in and get it all done within these, these sudden time frames. Um, you know, responding to, uh, to quarantines and pandemics like this is, is definitely something that's going to upset all of our work. But, um, you know, we're, we're hearing some interesting ways how, how that's changed people's work. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. If you're in the chats, um, let us know how, uh, you know, how things have changed in your, in your work, how you've coped in different ways that you've found to, um, to maintain working, you know, um, that's important for all of us. And, and if we can share some, some insight with each other, I think that's a, that's a great way to, to make this forum a, a good positive place. Uh, <laughs> um, one of the other things that I've been doing, uh, from home a whole lot is like I, I mentioned before, I've been doing gaming, but I've been getting into different platforms to connect with friends and colleagues. Um, there's a company now that we use Slack uh, as our method of communication. That's something I haven't used a whole bunch before. Um, and now a ton of my friends are using Discord, which is uh, a place where we can all hop on to a phone call together. We can chat and we can play video games, even if we're not playing the same game. Um, so that's that's really cool. If you ever want to join in, by the way, um, our, uh, our game streams are later on at night. They're usually in the evening on Sundays and on weeknights. Um, and then uh, that would be Twitch TV forward slash FCMG underscore stay. We'd love to see you there because we always do these AMA things. I'm always happy to answer your questions about media and just kind of start a conversation. You can also in, um, message me on Instagram. It's, it's at FCMG underscore stay. Once again, um, we're happy to chat about uh, any type of gear and, and equipment that you would like to talk about. Uh, let's see here. Let's looking at our, our list for other things to talk about here. Um, yeah. So going through, uh, going through live stream equipment, seeing how your live streams can be, um, you know, monetizable for your business. Like I've been, I've been noticing a whole lot of people, uh, are doing yoga and workouts at home. Um, uh, because, you know, a lot of personal trainers are, are not able to do work in the typical spaces that they've been doing them yoga instructors, martial arts instructors, um, musicians too, have been hopping into the live stream game. And it's a really, really fantastic way to, to connect with your audience. And hopefully, you know, we've done a little bit of connecting today. Um, that's just about all that I wanted to chat about with, with you today. Today was a big, big test. Mostly we wanted to see if this was a, uh, a good platform and a good forum to start these, uh, these conversations and these AMA work streams. Next time I'll be talking a little bit about photography. Uh, we'll be starting those uh, actual content streams. Um, so we'll be talking about, you know, how to do, how to get into photography and how to start using your camera on your phone and using the objects that you have for photography and to make it a little bit better. Um, there's really creative things that you can do with CDs and mirrors and, you know, random crap that you find around the house. It's, it's fantastic. Um, but we're going to work up from there. We're going to get into some more professional high end, you know, Photoshop editing and, and things like that. Uh, but we're going to build our way up and we're going to have questions throughout from anyone who wants to ask them. So, uh, thank you for joining us. We're going to sign off for now. Uh, but join us again next Monday 
uh, around noon. Today was a little bit late. It was around 1230, but um, we'll be starting these streams around noon every Monday, and we'll hopefully see you back with another producer's log. Um, we'll leave you on the stream ending, and uh, when these go up on YouTube, that's going to be our, you know, our little, you can click on the next link and all that stuff, but come check us out, Twitch TV underscore forward slash fcmg underscore stay uh we'll be streaming again soon and we'll be streaming video games tonight if you want to join us thanks for watching gonna end the stream peace